So the whole story is so negative and you need to keep going and you need to give people some hope. You know, that hope is the only thing that can help people in these kind of uh, situations. In Gaza, families like Suzy Ibrahim Bazoum's are on the brink of famine, according to the UN's World Food Program. Bazoum left Gaza in 2011 to move to the West Bank and hasn't seen them in person since. She used to regularly reach them by phone, but it's been difficult since the start of the war. Bazoum is sometimes scared to pick up the phone, not sure what the next telephone ring might bring. A call from her sister in late October revealed that her father was killed in an airstrike. She hasn't heard from her mother in months. On October 7, 2023, Hamas crossed into Israel, raiding homes, killing over a thousand people, and taking over 200 hostages across the border into Gaza. Since that day, Israel has launched a counterattack that has killed over 30,000 Palestinians, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. A ceasefire deal to bring the hostages home has proved elusive, with Israel calculating that about 112 hostages have been released. There are, you know, letters for her. This is, I believe you see this picture, but this is a, a picture that she, she's wounded. And I look at the video and I recognize my daughter. I said, oh my God, she's, she's not dead. She's alive. Shlomi Berger's daughter, Agam Berger, was taken hostage on October 7th from a military base. He's convinced that his daughter is still alive and is not giving up hope on her return. And the start they said, we must crush Hamas. Okay, but what about the hostages? And if there wasn't this shout on the streets that the hostages is the most important thing for us, for all the families, and not for the families, I think for most of the country, to bring them back because this is this country future. Since the war began, families of hostages have been growing impatient with the government response. And all the world is pressing on Israel, but no one is making pressure on Hamas. And to make a pressure on Hamas is first the USA, because this is the country that I can say deal the world, okay? The United States can pressure on Qatar, and Qatar can pressure Hamas. Eyewitnesses at the Supernova Music Festival reported seeing gang rapes, and hostages have come forward with their own stories of sexual assault. Hamas has denied these claims. We heard about sexual abuses. We know things happen. Okay, I don't know something specific on a gun. To think what, what, what is happening to her, because when I think about it all day, I, I just get crazy. A father that can do nothing for his daughter, nothing. People in Israel and Gaza, as well as across the globe, have been exposed to near constant killings and bombings through their smartphones, watching a war unfold in real time in the palm of their hand. With Israel seeing the largest killing since the Holocaust and the near constant bombardment and killings in Gaza, where regular life has been snuffed out. Years of conflict in the region have made civilians in Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank susceptible to PTSD and mental health issues. We're going to have um... Children and Adolescents Trauma Center here. The reactivation of all traumas, and this is something we never saw before. Uh, we, we had lots of war, unfortunately, in Israel and lots of traumas, but um, this time we see reactivation of very old traumas. For example, uh, Holocaust survivors, such as my mother, uh, they didn't talk about the Holocaust for 60 years, they overcome it. Uh, they function, they live their lives, uh, they are very old, most of them, but suddenly everything is coming back. 
my mother started to cry at nights and shout, don't take me, don't take me, don't take my kids. Um, so things are coming back. We feel that, you know, everybody wants us to stop the war and to get another humanitarian aid to, to Gaza, but they forgot. We have 134 people over there. We don't know their situation. Massive destruction in Deir el Bala. No. Where I live. Amal Nasser lives in Gaza and searches to find a way to feed her family when prices have skyrocketed. Airdrops of food supplies have been conducted in Gaza, but the move has received criticism for its impact. Some aid packages have also injured and killed others when dropped. Two, three, go. Oh, who is the first? Anna. Ah. It was very beautiful. So in Gaza, I, I could find lots of places for my kids to play at, uh, and I even uh, they even uh, have lots of toys. I bought it on the roof, uh, but uh, in the war end because they targeted the house that next to us. All their their uh, their toys was even destroyed. Amal Nasser spoke to USA Today by phone from Gaza. She said that her home has been partially destroyed and has no windows or doors. Nasser and her husband were able to get some plastic to help keep the cold out. When she gave birth to her third baby in January, there was no medication or anesthesia to ease the pain. She said she had to leave the hospital 30 minutes after giving birth because the hospital was full. Went there uh, to the labor uh, room. Um, I could hear the, the sound of the tanks uh, who coming. Uh, I, I I thought that it was coming uh, towards us, so I was so afraid. And I could hear the explosions around. And uh, moreover, I could hear the sound of the planes above us. And I was I I was thinking that at any moment we may be targeted by these uh, tanks or these planes. Um, uh, or by these rockets that what is thrown at everywhere. On March 25th, the United Nations Security Council called for an immediate ceasefire for the release of the hostages. The U.S. abstained from voting and the measure passed. All the friends of Agam are calm and written on the wall. I hope she won't be very angry when she came back, but <laughs> uh, she can paint uh, the walls, it's okay. أولاد حزينين كان أمي حياتهم يشوفوهم يشوفوا ستهم سيدهم إخوانهم خلاتهم أولاد الوحدين اللي حرموا إنهم يشوفوا سيدهم ستهم إخوانهم خلاتهم 